Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, bringing you an integration services tutorial. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at the execute SQL task. Don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more great content on business intelligence, SQL programming, and data analysis. And if you do enjoy the video, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. So the execute SQL task in SSIS or integration services. Uh, so this is quite a popular task along with the data flow task and it allows us to run SQL statements or store procedures. Uh, typical use cases um, that we'd use the execute SQL task for are to truncate a table. Maybe we want to even create tables execute store procedures uh, or return results from a store procedure or a select statement. The results can then be saved into a variable for further processing. So we're going to head over to SQL Server Data Tools now. Um, we're going to go through some examples of how we can use the execute SQL task and also the capabilities as well. I'm now in SQL Server Data Tools and we can see in the top left hand corner our two favourites in terms of the control flow are the data flow task and the execute SQL task and in my opinion they are by far the most commonly used. I know when I'm working with integration services when I need to design an ETL process it's mainly those two tasks that my control flow consists of. There are other tasks we can see available under common and containers uh, and then there are a lot of other tasks as well, um, maybe performing operations against the database. So we do have the ability to perform other tasks um, such as backups or rebuilding of indexes. But anyway, I digress, we're going to be talking about the execute SQL task. So to perform the execute SQL task we simply drop that onto here. Now we can see I've already got my connection manager set up to my relevant database so that would be something that we'd need to do first. If you're not familiar with how to set up connection managers there are a couple of videos on my channel uh, so feel free to go and check those out. So we we'll open up our execute SQL task here and we're going to start off with a very simple example. So really when we open this window uh, I'll just make this larger so we have some general information so we can rename the task and we can add a, a description to it. We can also set timeout details here uh, but the main area we spend our time is this SQL statement here. So our connection type here is OLEDB and then we're just going to set our connection manager underneath. So we have a little drop down here where we have the option of selecting an existing connection manager or creating a new connection manager at this point. Then we have our SQL source type that's currently set to direct input but we can set that to a file connection or variable as well. We're going to be sticking with direct input. And then SQL statement uh, we can click on the box on the right hand side with the three dots and that opens up a window where we can enter our SQL query. Now the thing about this window is it doesn't actually tell us if the SQL statement would be executed correctly so if you need to enter shouldn't really be entering quite complex SQL into here but if you need to enter something and you want to check the syntax is correct you can either pass the query or just check it runs in SQL Server Management Studio and we're going to be starting off with a very typical example we'll be doing in integration services which is just simply truncating a staging table in a lot of the ETL processes I build I will be loading data into staging performing some transformations on that data and then loading that into my fact and dimension tables. So the simple one we're going to start off with, we're just going to write a truncate statement. And we're going to be truncating one of our staging table stage sales. So I'll go ahead and execute that. We can notice the option for is query store procedure grayed out. 
and that's only if we're working with ADO.NET connection managers which we will cover in another video. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. Now I'm just going to test at this point that this will work successfully. So typically when we start in our ETL process our truncate table is normally the, the starting point. Uh, or we could have a um, we might use our own logging manually so we could have a, a statement here a SQL task that just inserts into a table the point at which it starts as well so that's another example we could go through so I'll go ahead and execute that now and um, we've got a green tick to say that that's executed successfully so that's a very simple example of what we would typically use the execute SQL task for typically would be truncating our staging tables that we're then going to be moving on to a data flow task that we load data into. I'm now going to move on to executing a stored procedure. So I'm going to use this SQL task to execute a stored procedure. And we're also going to be adding parameters to this stored procedure as well. So again, we'll open up this and we will amend this query. So I'm going to be executing my stored procedure and it's called insert locations. Now I'm going to enter a question mark and what a question mark is is a placeholder for a parameter. So we're going to move on to the parameter mapping tab shortly. If we have multiple parameters, we then just have a comma, comma separated list of question marks and then the first one in the list relates to the first parameter, the second one to the second parameter that we set. So at the moment we're only going to set one parameter. So I've got my execute store procedure as you'll all be familiar with and then I'm putting in the question mark as a placeholder. I'm then going to go over here on the left hand side to parameter mapping. Now it's always good to extend these because they don't always give great information. Unfortunately they don't extend by default. So I don't have any variables in here at the moment so I'm going to click on add. And the variable it's putting in is the only variable I've got within my project at the moment which is my connection string for the bookshop. So. I'm simply going to click here and there is a drop down list that shows me the system variables but I'm going to be creating a new variable. So the container, so the scope of this uh, variable is going to be our execute SQL task. Um, we're going to give it uh, a name, we don't want to just call it the default of a variable so we'll give this a name. This is actually going to be a location ID that we're, we're, we're passing in. Um, so I'll give this name of location ID. The namespace is where it's set so they can either be user or system. This is going to be user because it's created ourselves, not by the system. And it's an integer value so I'm just going to set that to int 16 and then we need to set a value. So in this case I'm just going to set a value of 2. And we also have the option there where we can set this to be read only or not which means the value of this variable cannot change but we don't need to do that in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. The parameter name I'm just going to refer to the parameter within the stored procedure so I'm just going to give that uh, that's the parameter name in the stored procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So what I'll do at this point is we haven't shown any detail within SQL Server Management Studio. So I'll just open that up and then we can see the results of this execution. Just wanted to show the detail of the stored procedure that we're actually going to be executing. So it's a very simple stored procedure just with one parameter value of that ID and it's going to be inserting into our load control process table an ID and location from our load control table where the ID matches the value. Um, and we can see in the load control process table there's no values in there at the moment. So I'm going to now execute this package although it's a package that only contains one task it's still classed as a package. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that now and we can see we've got the green tick 
And when I come back over to SQL Server and look at this query, I can see that that has inserted the data for me. So that was a good example of how we can execute stored procedures using the execute SQL task. And we're going to move on to one further example now, which is where we want to query the database and actually return a result set. Again, I'm just going to open up the details of my execute SQL task. And now we're going to be paying attention to this result set drop down. So at the moment, we, this is set to none, indicating there are no results coming back from what we're actually doing. Uh, but we have the options of single row, full result set, or return our results as XML. So the example we're going to be looking at is a full result set. So if we want to return a whole table into integration services, then this is what we need to be looking at. Um, and again, we're going to be changing our SQL statement. And we are going to be keeping it simple. We're just going to be changing this to a select location. We can see within the SQL query window as well, it doesn't actually format our SQL queries very nicely. So when you do have a lot of detail, you're running quite an extensive SQL query in here, or you're running a query that contains 20 or 30 lines of code, it can be quite difficult to read, but you can enlarge this box as well. So we're going to be running just a simple select statement from a table that just contains two columns, an ID and a location. Um, that's not the correct table name. So we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, and we can see even there the SQL statement doesn't look great. Uh, we're going to move on to the parameter mapping and we'll just remove this. So we don't need any parameters within this query. But what we are going to be looking at now is the result set. So this is the tab we're going to be working on. So if I click on add, we can have a new result set name. Now, because we're returning a full result set, we actually need to name this as, in fact, I'll go ahead and give an example of what would happen. Um, so we'll just call this result and we'll just add in a new variable. Uh, and this needs to be set to a type of object. So it's not going to return the results as a string, it's going to return it as a system object. Again, we'll give this a name, we'll call this uh, load control table. And we'll go ahead and click OK on that and OK on that. And then we'll go ahead and again, start debugging this package. So we have got an error here now. So if I go over to the progress tab, and we get this strange error here to say the result binding name must be set to zero for full result set and XML results. And it's kind of a strange error, um, but if I just stop debugging, and what that means is, is when we go back into result set, we need to give this a name of zero. Uh, so if I click on OK once I've changed that and start debugging again, we can see that that's now executed successfully. And what that means is that we now have our result set into our system.object, this variable down here. But the difficulty with that as well is we need to use scripting to actually access that information. So it's not like in SQL Server Management Studio itself where we can just query a table. This has actually gone into uh, an object within integration services. And if I now want to query that object or have a look at any information within that object, I need to do that within scripting. We're not going to go into that. We just wanted to give a overview of the execute SQL task, what it's capable of. Uh, and to think of the sort of things you can use it for. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's along with the data flow task, pretty much there's generally only those two that we'll need when building integration service packages. 90% of the time, those two tasks within the control flow will cover everything we need.
Really hope you have enjoyed that video. If you have, feel free to hit that like button. And as mentioned in the introduction, if you are interested in business intelligence, SQL programming, or data analysis, check out the other videos on the channel. There is a lot of great content on there. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.